top 10 patient dissatisfiers of all time is wait time from a call light request. And there's something very creative we can do to make that problem literally go away. But to learn about it, you're going to have to stick around and listen. Hi, this is Brian Lee, healthcare's engagement expert and founder of Custom Learning Systems. This presentation is called the No Pass Zone and it's number four of an eight part series called the License to Please Empowerment Bundle. And it's how we communicate our vision of kindness care everywhere. So the challenge as I see it with responding to a call bell is nurses and CNAs get busy. They get busy with other patients, they get busy with urgent and intense needs, and they can't always respond right away. This topic is presented by my colleague and friend Dave Dworsky. Let's listen in. Let's talk about the no-pass zone. Do you have an effective no-pass zone culture? Which means every employee answers and responds to every light every time. Here's how we define the no-pass zone. We say that anyone who notices a call light is expected to enter a patient's room and offer help. The no-pass zone means no walk-bys. This is a commitment that you all make that no one ever ignores a call light or walks by a patient or family member who is requesting help. And if you are a non-clinical staff member, you also know if you can't help directly, it's your responsibility to quickly find someone who can lend their assistance to the patients. In other words, patients are guests in your house. You need to know, in terms of a no-pass zone, in terms of some steps you might take, you need to know your current no-pass zone policy. Here's an example. From a hospital of our acquaintance, anyone who sees a room with a call light will not pass it without inquiring what's needed. You may not be able to meet their need but you can get the message and help to the right person who can offer assistance. Bottom line is this. You are now committed to assist in making this hospital stay the best possible experience for all patients. And step number two contains this powerful idea that any staff member can perform these duties. You may be an engineer in a patient's room fixing the air conditioning unit or adjusting their television set and they either ask you directly for help or you may be on the floor moving to the room that needs the television set adjusted and you see a call light and it's been blinking and no one's headed in that direction you can do the following things for a patient you do not have to be a, a clinician to do this you can reposition their TV remote control or their telephone if they need it closer or move the bedside table closer or a chair or trash can or tissues or other personal items closer to their reach. You can assist patients with making phone calls. You can help them answer the telephone. You can change the TV channels or turn the TV on or off. You can turn lights on or off. You can obtain personal items for a patient, such as a blanket, a pillow, a towel, a washcloth, slippers, toiletries. You can also obtain other items for a patient, for example, pen, pencils, books, magazines, and so forth. You can open and close the privacy curtains. You can reduce clutter if there are things cluttering the room. For example, family has brought in some extra food, some Chinese takeout food, and the containers for that food are still there cluttering up the bedside table or another table in the room. You can take it upon yourself to police the area and clean up the clutter. If you are entering an isolation room, you do need to follow all the PPE requirements for being correctly gowned. Now, to make it clear, only nursing staff can manage an IV or an infusion pump. Only nursing staff can offer pain relief or meds. Only nursing staff can remove meal trays or water pitchers. Only nursing staff can assist patients with eating and drinking or physically assist a patient or turn off any alarms from pumps or explain clinical matters and treatments as appropriate to their nursing discipline and the level of their competence. Only nursing staff can raise or lower a patient's bed. Non-clinical people aren't allowed to do that. 
Please remember to use these keywords if you cannot assist the patient for the reasons we've just expressed. For example, let me find the appropriate person to help you, Ms. Murphy. I'll let you know how long it'll take. Get comfortable using sentence starters and keywords. Once again, if you're a non-clinical person. Hello, my name's Dave. I'm from the electrical department. I'm an engineer. I noticed your call light is on. Is there something I can help you with? And if you can, you say, yes, I can help you with that. And you go about it. If you can't, once again, the key words are, let me find the appropriate person to help you. I'll let you know how long it'll take. And remember, before you leave, you say, is there anything else I can do for you? I have the time. And then you pause with an open face, your eyebrows raised, and perhaps the patient will ask you for something else. So, to summarize, what do you see as the benefits of having a no-pass zone? And who needs to own that zone? So here are our recommendations. That you clarify your hospital's current no-pass zone policy. That you adopt the personal slogan, I shall not pass. And if there is no policy yet in place, then you're okay to follow the duties as outlined in step two. If you're in doubt, double check. Well, there you have it. My special thanks to David Dworsky for his ideas, his insights, and his recommendations. To support you in your goal of transforming your culture of renters to owners and patient advocates, I'd like you to have this License to Please Toolkit. In addition to a step-by-step -step guide to implement this module, it comes complete with a total of seven more engagement tools that provide a step-by-step -step guidance to help you make this concept a reality. Yours, just for the asking, by checking on the link below. Our next tutorial in this channel is the Livet Platinum Rule. If you feel this video has created value for you, please like and subscribe to our learning channel and join our kindness care movement. Post any ideas or questions or topic suggestions you have in comments and please feel free to share this video with your peers and caregivers as much and as often as you want. Thanks so much for watching. This is Brian Lee, Healthcare's engagement expert, saying, let's go spread kindness care. And let's do it everywhere.